May 25th, 2012. It's InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Paul Joseph Watson. Coming up on the show tonight. Tonight, Paul Joseph Watson speaks with Charlie Skelton about his plans to join thousands at the Bilderberg meeting in Chantilly, Virginia. Plus, the TSA hires a priest with a history of sex abuse with children. Then, Australians face millions in fines for denouncing carbon taxes. All that and more, up next, the InfoWars Nightly News. Top story tonight, Australians face huge fines for speaking ill of carbon tax. Praised by Barack Obama as a model for the world, Australia's highly unpopular carbon tax set to take effect from July 1st is to be policed by laws which forbid business owners from criticizing it for causing price rises, with the thought criminals who do so under threat of being hit with huge fines of over $1 million. And this is out the Daily Telegraph out of Australia. Shops and restaurants could face fines up to $1.1 million if waiters or sales staff wrongly blame the carbon tax for price rises or exaggerate the impact. And so not only are small businesses and consumers in Australia being hit with the knock-on effects from this, because we know the, the initial scope of the law is to charge the top 500 polluting companies with carbon taxes. That, of course, gets passed on to consumers. They've already got skyrocketing energy rates in Australia as it is, already being hit from all sides. But now they're even bringing it to this level where for example, you know, if you're a restaurant, it, your waiter, your cleaner, whoever, if they dare mention um, that the carbon tax has caused you to rise prices on any kind of different thing that you supply or sell, it's a, it's a fine. It's up to $1.1 million fine for heresy against the Australian carbon tax, which just shows you the, you know, the fangs of green fascism are bearing once again. And they're actually going to enforce this by teams of carbon cops roaming the streets, carrying out snap inspections of businesses looking for infractions, uh, such as sales promotional material that talks about, you know, beat the carbon price rise before July 1st. So they're getting in discounts before that. If you dare mention it, you're slapped with a cool 1 million fine, according to this draconian law. Uh, so again, it's the whole tyranny of the carbon tax. It's not just about higher prices. It's about removing free speech, the right to dissent against carbon tax, because criticizing it in Australia is now a heresy. This is the law praised by Barack Obama as a model for the world. Of course, he's doing it through the EPA and shutting down the coal plants. In Australia, they're doing it through the direct carbon tax. And of course, by 2015, this is all going to be rolled into a carbon trading scheme, the likes of which cause farmers in places like Honduras and Uganda to be brutally evicted, turfed off their land by the, the corrupt governments in those countries in alliance with Western carbon trading companies because they want the land. It's lucrative. They take the land by force, wipe out huge numbers of people, old villages, and grow trees on the land and then sell the carbon credits. And of course, if you dare criticize any of it, then now you're going to get fined in Australia. And it's all going straight into the back pockets of Al Gore and Maurice Strong, the very people who own the carbon trading systems are invested in them. And of course, the very people pushing the myth, the alarmist, scaremongering myth of man-made global warming. So while that plandopolis is going on in Australia, over in America, we've got this story. Google Trends, fear of bank runs hits all-time high for Americans. According to the latest figures out of Google Trends, Americans have been searching for the term bank run in record numbers over the past couple of weeks, outstripping the level of concern displayed following the collapse of Lehman Brothers in 2008. The search volume index on Google for bank run in the United States region peaked at an all-time record level on May 13th and has hovered around this high ever since. And if you actually go and look at the figures, which I did this morning to compile this article, uh, Americans are more concerned than Greeks, more concerned than Greeks about bank runs, which is saying something given the amount of money that's been pulled out of Greek banks over the last few weeks. And of course, um, numerous financial experts have been saying in recent days what we've been warning about for years, which is the fact that this 
eurozone fallout will cause bank runs in not only Greece, but also places like Spain and Portugal, and the contagion will spread. And it's, of course, a, polit it's a particular concern for Americans because the FDIC's insurance funds, which are you know, set aside for bank runs and the like, aren't nearly enough. They're not large enough to cover the kind of contagion expected if bank runs hit the U.S. Some of you will remember the story from 2010 that we covered, which went viral, about how Citigroup had told its customers they had reserved the right, the bank had reserved the right to impose a seven-day withdrawal hold on all checking accounts. So if you want your money out, tough, you're going to have to wait a week. And they actually told their customers, we reserve the right to impose this at any time of our choosing. And it was, of course, to deal with the likelihood of bank runs. So this, this issue is very much front and center. We're going to continue to report on it, even though in the past we've been blamed for causing bank runs simply by pointing out that the invite the financial terrorists have created the environment for bank runs that comes back on us and we're to blame for it according to the establishment financial press but we shall nevertheless continue to cover this story and in fact a related story here out of uh, Reuters police urging Greeks to stop stuffing mattresses Greece's national police spokesman told Reuters, quote, many people have withdrawn their money from the banks fearing a financial crash, and they either carry it on them, find a hideout at home, or in storage rooms. We urge people to trust the banking system, leave their money there, or at least in a safe place, not hide it at home. So, yes, trust the banking system, just like the MF Global clients trusted John Corzine before their money disappeared in front of their eyes. You can trust, you know, the, the technocrats, the nice people. They care about your finances. They're not going to rape and pillage everything as the system collapses, which it already is in the process of doing. So there's the, the Greek national police spokesman saying, please don't stuff all your money in mattresses. Obviously, people are going to become a target of burglars, as always happens in a rapidly declining economic situation. But the trust in banks is at such a state that, People think their mattresses are far more safe, and that's exactly what they're doing. TSA hired accused sex abuse priest, paedophile, as screener. It's yet another TSA hires pervert, criminal, paedophile, you know, cross out the relevant section. These stories, of course, we seem to cover them almost every day. A former Catholic police who was defrocked after it was discovered he had sexually abused young girls is now working as a security screener for the TSA. It has been revealed. The CBS 3i team in Philadelphia reports that Thomas Hawkins, a priest in South Jersey until 2002, is now working at a security terminal in Philadelphia International Airport. And this is a guy who, according to the lawsuit, sexually abused this 11-year-old girl on multiple occasions. Uh, you know, maybe he used that as part of his TSA job application because, you know, it sounds crass, but there are YouTube videos where people literally call up TSA recruitment centers and admit to being perverts who want to sexually fondle people. And they're actually treated seriously and with due respect by TSA recruiters on the other end of the line. You can actually go and watch that YouTube clip. So we've documented the fact that they specialize in hiring perverts and criminals and is it really any surprise i mean who else wants to stand there all day groping strangers only you know mentally disturbed people egomaniacs little hitlers would want this job in the first place so it's no wonder when they all turn out to be criminals stealing laptops jewelry cash pedophiles child molesters perverts you know there's a story almost every other week about guys just walking up to women and flashing the TSA badge before they attack them. It's, it's a criminal class of perverts, as we've documented. Uh, and, it, you know, they're the perfect role model for other TSA applicants like this guy, this sex abuse priest paedophile. And again, just another reason why this agency needs to be abolished. It's a shame upon America. And now we've got the legislation where airports are perfectly entitled to evict TSA screeners and replace them with private security, which one of the airports in Florida has already done and another one, Orlando International, looks likely to follow. I mean, it's another perfect example. 
another pervert in a TSA uniform using his position of power to facilitate his perversions. Another exemplary reason to abolish the TSA. Pentagon contractor admits engaging in dirty tricks against journalists. This is Kurt Nimmo, Infowars.com. Camille Shidiak, co-owner of Leone Industries, a Pentagon contractor, has admitted to criminally targeting journalists for reporting on a failed Pentagon propaganda operation. The online misinformation campaign first reported last month has raised questions about whether the Pentagon or its contractors had turned its propaganda operations against U.S. citizens. And of course, they recently added the amendment to the new defense bill, which basically authorizes for the first time Pentagon propaganda to be targeted domestically against U.S. citizens. We know that's already been happening for years. I mean, you've only got to look at the fact that the Obama administration is working hand in glove with the Pentagon and Hollywood um, to craft the, to reproduce the fabled Bin Laden raid for our screens. It's domestic propaganda. It's been going on for decades, but now they're just in the process of codifying it into law with this new amendment. And this story continues out of Infowars.com. Shidiak used dirty tricks reminiscent of the FBI's COINTELPRO tactics to target the journalists. And these journalists, they weren't even political. They were, they were investigating some mine company corruption or something. But Leone's co-owner created a batch of fake websites, social media accounts, and a fraudulent Wikipedia page in an effort to smear the journalists. And basically, they created a whole set of fake websites that pretended to be fan websites of these journalists. And they just slowly turned them into complete uh, outposts for smearing them to try and uh, discredit their investigations. And uh, as is documented in this article, and as of, I've written many articles about since 2008, basically the Pentagon has put out a raft of fake websites that are designed to look like independent media sources. They admitted this in 2008. I'm not making it up. You'll probably see many of them out there when you read the internet on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's all part of Cass Sunstein's cognitive infiltration of so-called conspiracy theorists. Uh, and putting out disinformation to confuse people, lead them away from the truth, lead them down into dead ends, uh, and make everything futile. And then, of course, as part of this uh, domestic propaganda program, as it applies to the internet, you've got literal armies of paid trolls who are just hired to attack genuine people all day long. That's what they sit there doing. That's like that's why you'll get an Alex Jones video, and you know the. It's been on YouTube for a matter of 20, 30 seconds, and it's already got three dislikes and some troll comments underneath it because governments and major corporations, Monsanto also being one of them, they pay people to sit on the internet and talk crap all day about, you know, for example, people putting out information about Monsanto herbicides causing the colony collapse disorder with bees. And governments do it too for political and uh, specifically warmongering propaganda. The Air Force admitted they were doing it as well. So this contractor has basically uh, fallen on their sword. They're saying, oh, it's nothing to do with the Pentagon. It's all us um, to protect the Pentagon as they try and roll out this domestic propaganda with the new amendment, which is tied into the defense bill. So that's an interesting story on Infowars.com today. Uh, and we'll continue to track it because it's a key issue with uh, the paid armies of trolls, the deliberate disinformation that's polluting the internet and preventing genuine truth seekers um, from finding accurate uh, and reliable information. Again, I urge you to subscribe at prisonplanet.tv. It's what funds our entire network. Many of you will be watching this on YouTube, most of you probably, uh, but YouTube doesn't fund any of it. It's all funded by prisonplanet.tv. Your subscriptions pay for all the employees, all the bandwidth, the cameras, uh, the whole bunch of work that goes into making this production every night. And of course, I mean, $5.95, we're still running the 15-day uh, discount, and it's, it's been going since 2004. An armory of material, speeches, special events, Alex Jones Show, Daily Archives, Infowars, Nightly News Archives. You can watch the show live. You don't even have to wait until it goes on YouTube. Uh, and all your subscriptions fund our effort, keeps us on the air, keeps us spreading the truth. So please subscribe at prisonplanet.tv. Also want to mention our new uh, 
uh, social networking behemoth planetinfowars.com. And that's the place where you can go to meet up with like-minded people safe in the knowledge that we will not sell your information to corporations or the government and that we're not a giant NSA spying database like Twitter and Facebook. And of course, you're going to find people who are on the same level as you. They read the same kind of information. They want to get involved in the same kind of activist projects. You can put up your own blog, uh, your own YouTube videos. It's all there. We've even got a dating section where you can meet like-minded people, form relationships. And of course, it all goes to building the army of info warriors in this information war, which is why we urge you to sign up for free at planetinfowars.com. I'm going to go to a break now, but coming back after this break, we're going to speak to Charlie Skelton about the upcoming Bilderberg 2012 conference in Chantilly, Virginia. Stay tuned. Have you been to InfoWarsShop.com lately? Express your inner patriot with these brand new InfoWars t-shirts. Say it loud with the InfoWars bullhorn shirt. Or educate the sheeple with the Bill of Rights shirt. Grope the public's mind with the TSA shirt. And with this shirt, you can let the dark side know of the Rebel Alliance's power. All available at InfoWarsShop.com. For more than six years, I've talked on the air about creating a social network. PlanetInfoWars.com is in its beta phase. We're just launching, and I want to invite all of you out there to be in on the ground level. Planet InfoWars is about people coming together, forming activist organizations, getting involved politically, hunting and fishing, gardening, dating. This is a place for people who love freedom to meet and to talk and to write and to post information. And I give you this pledge. We are not going to spy on you and sell your data to the New World Order. PlanetInfoWars.com is free, so people who love freedom can get together. Connect with people who are awake and know what we're facing. Be active. Organize. Take action. Go viral. Create. Contribute. Resist. Because resistance is victory. You are victory. It's waiting for you to breathe power into it. PlanetInfoWars.com Sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure. My friends, I've done a lot of research, and the best gravity filter out there, bar none, is ProPure. And it's available discounted at InfoWars.com. Its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth. There's no priming required. It's NSF 42 certified. Optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95%. Easy to set up and use. Doesn't doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure. But if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. We're back on InfoWars Nightly News, and I'm delighted to be joined by Charlie Skelton, who, of course, covers the annual Bilderberg Group Conference on behalf of The Guardian newspaper. And as we also know, uh, Charlie helps write some of the most popular comedy shows broadcast on UK television. Charlie, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you for having me. It's lovely to be here. Well, first off, Charlie, just confirm for us that you will be in attendance in Chantilly next weekend. Well, assuming I get through the uh, torturous process of the airport, then I think, yeah, I will be there. My, uh, my, I've got my visa, I've got my, uh, my uh, NUJ card, um, I've got everything. I'm fully legitimate. I'm going to be there covering it this year, yeah. I was just saying to you before we started, I've provided the TSA with your precise arrival time and flight number, and they assured me they're going to make you feel very welcome. Well, that's extremely kind of you. I, look, I very much look forward to the fond, fond I was going to say fondle, but fond welcome that I'll get <laughs> at, the, at uh, customs or whatever, they, security. But you were saying it's not your first experience with the TSA. Well, I... I, I I did have a slight run in um, uh, September last year where it wasn't that bad, but I, the gentleman was so rude to me 
um, about putting, you know, shouting at me, put the belt in the thing and the shoes in the, in, the, in the tray. And I just said, please. He said, put the belt in the thing and the shoes in the tray. And I, I said, please. And we had this standoff. I just simply wanted him to say the word please. And then uh, I went and after I eventually obviously bowed down and uh, I complained it to his uh, supervisor. In the most, I turned into sounding like Prince Charles, incredibly posh, and just said, I'm a frequent flyer and this is just not, not good enough. And uh, um, uh, anyway, but uh, it was very, that, that was just a sort of, just a little minor glimpse of, uh, of I just, it was so dehumanizing having this person just shout at me. I just, I just thought, I didn't, just, this isn't right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and humanize this moment with just simple words of uh, courtesy. Well, I'm sure it'll be somewhat different from the Swiss experience, who are generally very friendly, but uh, I'm sure you'll be fine. Bilderberg, then, I was, I was reading a Politico article which came out on Sunday, and they actually quoted Mitt Romney's foreign policy advisor, Robert Kagan, and he said, quote, he, called, he described Bilderberg as, quote, a lot of vaguely uninteresting people giving vaguely uninteresting lectures and then having nice meals in nice places. So, Charlie, do you think the likes of, you know, Eric Schmidt, NATO heads, global power brokers, do you think they bother to fly halfway across the world every year for a nice meal? It's amazing. They all managed to get their, their diaries. To, they managed to find three, or in some cases, four days clear. And this is, you know, we're not talking about just some guys here and this. It's, you know, it's, it is the CEO of Shell and the chairman of Shell and the vice chairman of Shell and, you know, uh, the major shareholder in Shell. And um, you've got the head of the CEO, uh, the chairman of Barclays. You've got the CEO of Airbus. You've got uh, it just goes on and on. You've got Joseph Ackerman, the head of Deutsche Bank. And these are not small fry. I mean, last year we had uh, our, the Chancellor of the Exchequer there for three days in an official capacity with a member of the Treasury staff, and not a single word came out from him, or, or barely written about it. And it was just extreme, just extraordinary. And when when the, the attack dogs come out and uh, and say, oh, it's just a, you know, it's just an old fart playing golf, or excuse my French, uh, or um, you know, it's just a supper club or something. No, it's not. It's a very very serious conference that lasts for three days. They have lanyards and a and a, and a schedule they stick to, and uh, you know, it's a very very serious business. And and I, I it gets me very annoyed when I hear it written off like that because it's just we're just a lie basically. Well, we know it's a lie because of their own leaked documents. I mean, they were talking about the euro single currency as far back as 1955. And, of course, Etienne Davignon bragged that they helped create it before the Maastricht Treaty in 1992. Uh, Willie Clays, the former NATO Secretary General, admitted uh, in a 2010 radio interview that Bilderberg attendees turn up at the conference. They set the consensus for policy, and then in their each respective sphere of influence, you know, they go back and implement that policy. And he said that publicly. So I don't see how they can yeah. claim anymore that it's just a game of golf. Well, they can keep claiming it for as long as the mainstream media keeps ignoring it, unfortunately. Because um, there's this strange, and I'm going to use the word conspiracy, but a strange conspiracy of kind of ignorance that surrounds it that the, that's perpetuated by the mainstream media. That sort of, I, 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 think, I think about this a lot because it, it baffles me. Every time I go there, I get a real set, sense of co sort of cognitive dissonance when this massive event is happening. Uh, you know, all the, the helicopters and the, the machine guns and the, uh, you know, the armed guards and the, and the limousine after limousine after limousine and, 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 you, and this massive hotel lockdown. And then you turn around and you go, well, where's the press? I don't understand. The Chancellor of the Exchequer in here, you know, the Deputy Secretary of State, James Steinberg, or whatever, you know, they're, or the, any number of European foreign ministers or, uh, or finance ministers. And you're going, I don't quite get it. I don't see where the press is. But I think what's happened is that they kept the lid tight for so long and so for so many years. But now, if you're in the media, you sort of don't, A, you don't really know about it that much, although that is changing a bit. And B, you're sort of a bit embarrassed to admit that you don't. So you kind of just ignore it. So I don't know. Uh, that's me trying to put a, uh, a positive spin on the ignorance and stupidity of the mainstream media, of which I'm a proud member. For <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that, that was one of the other questions. You're, I mean, you, do you consider yourself a member of the mainstream media or just, you know, a, a foot in each camp, as it were? Oh, definitely I do. I mean, I'm, you know, uh, um, 
I do, and I've been, I've been, been treated extremely well by The Guardian over, uh, for the last, you know, this will be my fourth year doing it. Um, you know, they let me write what I want. Um, they're, they're extremely pleased with the, you know, the, the amount of traffic the articles get on the web. You know, it, it goes for, I've had the articles be the most read viewed, uh, viewed on the website. And, you know, that's, it's good. That, that shows that there's an appetite for people to know about this stuff. And it's just... You know, it's not. It's not some kind. It's neither. It's neither a, a, a weird conspiracy, nor is it a supper, supper club or a, you know, a bunch of people playing a bit of snooker for a couple of days. You know, it's a very, very serious political event, and historical event. You know, you, you mentioned you went back to the 50s. I mean, it goes back earlier. And, you know, and you look at the the people who in the late 40s are uh, sort of manoeuvring to set this thing up. And you know, it's not set up by the Tooth Fairy and Mary Poppins. You know, it's set up by senior, very senior members of the CIA and the British intelligence. And uh, it, it, you know, it has its roots uh, in, a, in very dark places. And, um, and it's still, I think, the last year, we, the, the, the keynote address was given by the head of the NSA. You know, it's not, it hasn't really changed it's, it really very much. It's still this strange mixture of high finance, uh, politics and, and, and the intelligence services. I remember when you first started covering Bilderberg for The Guardian, you were kind of tasked with writing a, a humorous, entertaining piece about it. I want to know, has your view of Bilderberg changed in those years? Has it become more kind of uh, hardcore, or is it still in the humorous camp? It's a bit of both, but it, well, I tell you what has changed is um, I've done a lot more research, and, you know, something that, you know, you guys on Infowars or Prison Planet keep saying is, you know, read the documents, just read the documents. And you can do that. And Bilderberg is a very good example of that. You can read this. You can read declassified cabinet papers. You can read, you can, you can read stuff on really good stuff, paper, um, academic work that's been done around the, the setting up of this and, and later on. And you can, you can start looking as well. Um, and this is very instructive, just looking at who the people are that um, are sitting uh, sitting in this conference for, for these three days. And something that I wasn't aware properly, I've just discovered the presence of Goldman Sachs is a lot more than I, than I was aware. I just did by reading the people where they sit on various boards. You know, you've got the head of the chairman of Goldman Sachs International. You've got a member, you've got, um, that's uh, Peter Sutherland. You've got, um, uh, uh, you've got Mario Monti, you know, the, who's the new Italian PM. He's a former Goldman Sachs international advisor. And you've got um, James A. Johnson, who um, is he sits on the board of Goldman Sachs, and he, they're all those three are all on the steering group of the of the committee, so, uh, of the, the Bilderberg group. So you've um, you, you, I've only just learned that now. So and you know, it's a big, long learning. But that's one thing I've learned too. There's, there's so much to learn. It's just frightening. So Charlie, we see thousands of people at these global summits. Why do you think the Bilderberg Group, despite the fact that it, you know it has many of the same attendees, why don't we see a similar kind of uh, protest group, especially amongst left-wing activists? That's a good question. I mean, the way I, one thing is that when I, the, my small experience of going along to these meetings, um, the people that do go and protest, and there really aren't very many, although it's been growing and growing to the point where you know it's in the hundreds now. Um, they are much more switched on. They're very, they're very much, they've got a much wider and deeper political understanding than you generally get in, uh, and I'm just, you know, generalizing. And I think that they've had to obviously do a bit of digging themselves because this thing has been withheld from the public consciousness. And I've got, um, for so long that it's just sort of, it just is, it, it just isn't in people's brains t to go along weirdly. And I think that's changing. I think it really is changing, and um, I think t this is going to be a, a, a watershed year. But if you look back, I've got a cut cutting from the Daily Express, a British paper from the, the 50s, and it reports a tiny little paragraph, but it, the substance of the report is that no one's really allowed to talk about this thing. And the problem is that for decades, simply no one talked about it at all, you know, very few people. And then now the the word is spreading, and it's spreading, you know, it's spreading through sites like Infowars and, you know, I'm doing my little bit and the internet is churning it up and, and people are starting to dig and look and, and understand. And so people are just starting to 
to realize how important this meeting is. Uh, so I think everything's changing, basically. Um, and I think, in, you know, hopefully at the end of this year, we'll be going, wow, that was incredible. Look how many people turned up. There were two, 3,000 people. And, uh, and I think it will, you know, I live in hope. So do you think there's a kind of, there was a kind of stigma around it which is rapidly disappearing where it was seen as a concern of crazy paranoid conspiracy theorists whereas now people see it as a threat to everybody's freedom no matter what political persuasion they come from? Absolutely and I've, uh, I, I've been involved a little bit in uh, the Occupy movement in London and they, um, uh, they put out a statement recently when um, uh, uh, a member of uh, an ex sort of ex Goldman Sachs managing director was being sort of manoeuvred towards uh, possibly taking over at the bank of uh, the Bank of England because they understand that you know the, the great tentacles of Goldman Sachs are wrapped around the throat of the world, etc. And a, they've started to see through the corruption that they're objecting to, particularly on Wall Street and and, uh, and in London and in the big financial centres, they're starting to put two and two together and say, well, who are these people? And they're looking at Bilderberg and going, well, it's just them. I mean, they, if, it, if, you know, if there's a group of people that I'm, that, you know, as an occupier, that I'm particularly annoyed at, they're all sitting around a table with the politicians, it's Bilderberg. So they're starting to see that it's the same problem. And, you know, and I think that the whole sort of, left-right thing is going to start vanishing around. You know, when you see the word Occupy Bilderberg, it's two words I would never thought to see together. You know, a mainstream uh, activist movement combined with quite an esoteric, or so has been for a while, esoteric political interest, Bilderberg. And I think that's going to start exploding these barriers that, that have existed. And then it's going to start being taken up and it's just going to be used, understood, and looked at, and uh, and and I hopefully just join the mainstream where it belongs. And that's in no small part to your work and other people like, for example, David Swanson, the big anti-war activist, came out last week and urged people on the left to join the Occupy Bilderberg protest. So that kind of synergy really is coming together. Just final question here, Charlie. Give me a give me a Charlie Skelton survival guide for staking out Bilderberg. What advice would you give to people who are planning to make the trip to Chantilly next weekend? Oh my goodness! Uh, obey the law. Um, <laughs> number one. Uh, well, I say that. Um, bring a lens. Bring a big lens. Bring the biggest lens that you can get your hands on, because that. The more lenses pointed in the more places, it means that we can, we, the alternative media, and I'll just put my alternative media hat on, uh, well, such media as will be there can start pre piecing together the, the real story of what's going on. And, you know, we, someone last year got a glimpse of, I don't even know who it was, actually, I should be able to credit them, but took a photo through a car window and got a photograph of the Chancellor of the Exchequer, um, George Osborne. And through that photograph, it, it, it enabled us to do a bit more digging, a bit more journalism, and actually contact the Treasury and to establish that he was there officially. So be prepared to take photos and sit out in strange places watching cars whiz past you. Uh, but also be, be prepared to meet some amazing people. And, the, you know, I basically, for me... Uh, after, well, apart from the first time I went, where it was just a nightmare and I got chased around by the Greek police. But um, every other time, I get to meet amazing people who are, uh, it, you know, it makes you feel a lot less lonely, you know? You suddenly don't have to take stuff for granted. You're not talking to, to people that, that, that if, you talk to people that know stuff and you, 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 you just, you can begin conversations on a different level. And it's just, it's very, it's very nice. It's, and I absolutely urge people to go. Any, any of your listeners stroke viewers who are even contemplating going, I would go because it's, a, it's an extraordinary spectacle apart from anything else. It's an extraordinary spectacle and it's, and it's an important thing to be, to go to and you will meet amazing people. And it looks like an all time record in terms of protest numbers. I'm going to dwarf anything we've seen before. So Charlie Skelton, I mean, we, I look forward to reading your always excellent and humorous articles at The Guardian, which, of course, as you talked about, just getting massive traffic through the Drudge Report and other promotion. Uh, and we look forward to seeing your work at Bilderberg 2012. Charlie Skelton, thanks for being on the show. Thank you very much. Again, I would urge you to subscribe at prisonplanet.tv. Of course, many of you watch this on YouTube, but 
YouTube doesn't give us any money to produce it, doesn't give us money to pay for the cameras, the bandwidth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we really appreciate your subscriptions at PrisonPlanet.tv. Of course, you get the live show, you get the Alex Jones radio show, full archives stretching back years and years, speeches, interviews, all that good stuff, and it all supports this network. PrisonPlanet.tv, 15-day free trial still running at PrisonPlanet.tv. And also, as you probably know, we've just launched Planet InfoWars, which is our huge new social networking website for info warriors. We're not going to divulge your information. We're not going to sell it to corporations like Facebook, Twitter. We're not a giant NSA database. And you'll meet a ton of like-minded, interesting people there. You can get your blog on there, organize activist events, all kinds of good stuff. And that's planetinfowars.com. That's going to do it for tonight's edition of InfoWars Nightly News. I've been Paul Joseph Watson. We'll see you on the next edition. Take care.